Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today, we are excited to share our project, Vocal Motion, a spatially aware, voice controlled, five axis robotic arm powered by XCore AI. Our technical director on the project is Andrew Kavanoff, a global system solutions architect at Exmos and a URI graduate of 2008. Our project is comprised of two ELE Comp designers, myself, Mason Jacob, an electrical engineering student, and my teammate, Derek Refredo, a computer engineering student. The sponsoring company on the project, Exmos, is a fabulous semiconductor company headquartered in Bristol in the UK. Their mission is to change the way systems are deployed on silicon, and they do this through their unique lineup of advanced microprocessors, such as the X-Core AI. As you can see in the diagram on the left, XMOS technology is employed in a wide range of fields, including home automation, manufacturing and preventative maintenance, health and fitness, motor control, vehicle intelligence and security, and public safety. They are on the leading edge of IoT, which is the Internet of Things, and strive to deliver embedded computers for any application. The motivation for this project stems from the introduction of the third generation of Exmos's XCore AI. This more advanced generation touts DSP, or Digital Signal Processing, AI and I.O. processing boosts that give it an edge over its competitors. It also features nanosecond timing accuracy, full-fledged SDKs, and a software framework that helps to minimize power consumption to under 55 milliwatts. Optimizations and a streamlined pipeline allow the X-Core AI to reach 1,600 mega floating point operations at a rapid 800 megahertz clock frequency. Furthermore, the processor's software-defined flexibility means that it can be applied in numerous ways, as shown by the diagram on the left. The X-Core AI can be used as an advanced microcontroller, the brains for an AI-enabled device, a versatile FPGA, and a real-time processor to analyze and provide meaningful data, such as intrusion detection, in real time. Exmos is looking to back these claims and support marketability of their new chip through our project. As such, we were tasked with creating an elegant demonstration of the chip's capabilities. This open-ended problem allowed us to focus our efforts on a project we thought would do this best. We decided on a voice-controlled, spatially aware robotic arm. We will utilize the BCN3D Muveo, which is an open source robotic arm with five degrees of freedom and is low cost because it is 3D printed, that will act on a wake word or other com voice commands in real time. We will create a custom modular PCB that can be used by future projects for stepper motor control or other generic motor control with an XMOS XCore AI. And furthermore, we will create a software framework for image recognition with the XMOS XCore AI chip to use for robot path planning, image recognition or object detection, and real-time interaction with the environment. The following is a block diagram of our proposed system. On the left, we have our inputs that will be used to make decisions, such as our microphone for voice commands and our camera for image and object detection. We have our power supply circuitry, which will provide the necessary voltages needed to run the system. And then on our PCB, we will have two dual XCore AI 60 pin packages doing all the voice recognition, image recognition, and kinematic slash path planning calculations. Then on our modular side of the PCB, we have a drivetrain where you can select the type of stepper motor driver you would like to use uh, following a common footprint, which can be changed out to your needs or specifications. Finally, this PCB will output the required signals and voltages to our stepper motors and servo motor that we'll be using to control and run the arm. This project has the potential to make a great economic impact on both voice-controlled electronics and the Exmos company and industry in general. In voice-controlled electronics, our modular PC design will allow other users to create different systems to drive motors or other peripherals with voice control. Our PCB will also provide a framework 
for image recognition with an XMOS chip through our camera inputs that will be provided on the board. In terms of company and industry, our demonstration of the X-Core AI and its capabilities will help XMOS's marketing efforts as complete robotic arm control with a microprocessor sized chip and power consumption is an adequate demonstration of cutting edge technology in multiple industries. I will now summarize the team's technical accomplishments to date. On the software side, we have successfully learned how to use the XMOS Voice SDK as well as the XSIM tool to simulate running code on the chip. We also developed an SDK dev container to facilitate easy dis distribution of the tools necessary to develop as a team. Furthermore, we completed basic stepper motor control implementation with the XCore AI. And most importantly, we have implemented forward, forward and inverse kinematics to control the arm. As you can see from the video playing in the center, on the hardware side, we have completed printing of the components, sourcing all the other components, and assembling the arm, as well as all the circuitry required to control the motors on the arm and make the arm move. I will now dive into my key individual accomplishments achieved throughout the semester. Firstly, I took a lead role in developing the dev container with Docker for the XMOS platform to facilitate development as a team. As you can see in the diagram, a dev container works by isolating the required packages needed to run code in a container, a sort of virtual environment that allows for running code on any device or system without having to install the necessary supplementary software. This is important because in the case of developing for XMOS, the XMOS XTC tool chain as well as the SDK are kind of difficult to install on an individual computer. To facilitate development, a dev container was created to isolate these components and allow each team member to quickly get up and running with the software necessary for development. Furthermore, I also worked with the motor control using the XCore AI. I set up the basic circuitry needed, as you can see on the left, to control a single stepper motor with an analog stepper driver. We have the X-Core development kit in the bottom left, a level shifter to shift the voltage from 1.8 volts to 5 volts to control the step analog stepper motor driver, which is right to the right of the level shifter. And finally, we have the stepper motor driver all the way to the right in the middle. I also took a lead on sourcing all the components and printing all the printable components for the arm as well as assembly. And you can see my completed work in the photo on the right. My future developments that will be accomplished next semester include taking the dev board circuitry that I designed and implementing it as a PCB. As you can see, it will look something similar to the Xmoros Dell development kit on the left here. I will also look into implementing the image plus LiDAR path planning implementation that we plan on using to detect objects and move to them to be able to grasp them. I will now introduce our next presenter, Derek Raffetto. Thank you, Mason, for your excellent introduction. I hope my work is as impressive as yours. My main accomplishment was dealing with the software. My job in the software was to complete the inverse kinematics. You may ask yourself, what are inverse kinematics? Inverse kinematics are the process of getting the angular positions to create a XYZ or Cartesian position in space. If you look at the figure on the left, you will note a two joint, two length robotic arm. This is a very simple figure, significantly simpler than ours. However, it's very beneficial to explain. So what I want you to imagine, we have the red length. That red length, is opened at an angle of Q1. Thus, we can represent its X contribution and Y contribution simply as cosine Q1 times the length for the X and sine times Q1 for the Y. For the green section, what I want you to imagine is that this green section is moved to the origin. And if I were to do this, you may hopefully notice 
that the green section's angle, X and Y, has been affected by Q1 and Q2, both together. Thus, as you can see, we would take the length of the second, the green, and multiply by cosine Q1 plus Q2 for the X, and times sine for the Q1 plus Q2 for the Y contribution. And on the right, you'll see a very simple figure for polar coordinates. My example on the left is in 2D. However, our example is three-dimensional. Thus, this same geometrical representation of the X, Y, Z contributions due to the angles would be transcribed into three dimensions using polar coordinates as our basis. My future accomplishments will mostly be focused on the software side of the project. First and foremost, I must finish the voice control integration, which is getting the language model integrated with our kinematics to push it to a specific position in space. Second, I will assist Mason in the electronic side with the MIPI, which is what we will be using to upload the camera data onto our board. Thirdly, I will need to have our image recognition model integrated with the rest of our system. I'll have to find a suitable model and make sure that it works exactly how we intend to have the image recognition we hope to have for the arm. And lastly, I'll have to integrate everything, including the voice control, kinematics, and the image recognition to create our seamless image voice activated robotic arm. Lastly, I will visit the team remaining challenges. First, with our lowest confidence, as it will most likely be the most difficult aspect of our project, is the camera and image recognition. Imaging models shouldn't be too complicated. However, using our camera may prove very difficult, as we have never used MIPI, the serial communication used for cameras. Second, live in motion and drive of the physical robot. We already have it moving with our drivers. However, we plan to add sensorless homing and stall guard detection, similar things used in 3D printers to prevent it from breaking itself. This goes in tandem with our safety concerns, which again, we're very confident with our digital drivers, we can achieve a very safe product. Our PCB testing shouldn't be too difficult. Again, our PCB is not very complicated and we will mostly be removing and making only slight modifications to the pre-existing PCB that XMOS provided in their dev board. Processing power concerns we have mostly visited as we will be using two XMOS boards to create our project. And lastly, our neural network for the voice will certainly fit on our chip. However, there, it may prove more difficult than we imagine to fit both the voice and the imaging model on the same board with the limited space that we have of only about one megabyte. Last, we have our acknowledgments for the people who made this project possible. First and foremost, Andrew Cavanaugh. He was our technical director from XMOS. He has been incredibly helpful and knows everything there is to know about our project. This would not be possible without his help and knowledge. Brendan Smirbeck has also been incredibly helpful in the finance and debugging aspect of our project as he is very knowledgeable on the subject of the microcontroller style that we have. And lastly, Dr. Sunak, who put all of this together, is maybe the most important of all because our project would never come to light without his program. Thank you so much, everyone.